begin, uh, I don't know if we should assume that all crystal consciousness is. Well, I wouldn't assume it would necessarily. Maybe on Earth it's. Uh, maybe on Earth it's, yeah. But maybe it's very advanced somewhere Could else. Could be somewhere else, yeah. yeah. But I thought that was interesting. It was the first time it got me thinking about consciousness in non what we consider living forms. But mm -hmm. he was saying that's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So, and that got me thinking. That's back in 1970. But yeah, I was just rereading some of the notes, and it said that uh, I had asked when was where would which science would be the first to discover microvita, and the answer was physics. And, and I said, well, where what would they look for? And he said, well, when they develop instruments that can see extremely small particles, then they'll begin to notice a shadow effect, a, a, a slight glow around certain particles. And the glow, he said, is not microvita, but it's caused by microvita attached to those particles, and you'll be able to see their effect as traces in the pictures. Was there anything about noble gases in microvita at all? I haven't heard of it. I'm not, I'm not saying there is not, I just haven't heard of it. Yeah, I came across this bizarre thing in a book called Einstein Doesn't Live Here Anymore <laughs> that uh, talks about noble gases having this type of energy that with, if you ionize a noble gas and apply a magnetic field on it, that you can uncover these energy points in the noble <laughs> gas and <laughs> these bizarre things. So. And then there's some other, uh, Dennis, who was the other person that was doing the noble gas stuff? Uh, PAP, in the PAP engine. Right, right, right. It was supposedly powered by noble gases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that sounded like the same effect. Yeah. Right? That's interesting. Yeah, it shows the time. But he was saying that you could even take a compressed container of a noble gas with a coil around it to ionize it and then apply magnetic field and you could deflect a laser beam of that as an experiment. Ooh. You could deflect oh. light. Because that should be easy to create. Duplicate. Yeah, it sounded fairly easy. If I can find the book again, I might get the exact details on it. Do you do you think that we could, if this is okay, to try to talk a little bit more about orgon? Because orgon sure. is, there's a lot of people that you know. I know well, orgons. Well, that right, may actually get related back into to orgon again. This being a, a manifestation okay. way to get into it. But there's something about subtle energy that is present that supposedly, and I don't know if this noble gas thing comes out or not, but. Um, but it sounds like it's a related sort of thing. I think it would be helpful because I know that there's a lot of people that are feeling compelled to build their own orgon devices. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, not just me, but like around the globe people are. So, like what you found in Prague, if you could maybe just talk about that yeah. again for a couple of minutes. And then mm -hmm. maybe we could build on that because it just seems like they're, it so relates to everything that we're talking about that's mm -hmm. going on that maybe we have some new insights that result from it. Well, one thing I, I, I was going to bring up before, which is part of the microvita information, is that most of the microvita on the planet Earth is generated at the core. And it comes out, I can't remember what's the North Pole, South Pole, and it travels along the field lines of the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it, at certain points, you know, magnetic field lines, they enter the Earth's surface. And this is where where microvita um, start to to affect life on the planet and form, you know, affect species and affect uh, change and evolution, and uh, and that could be what the organ generators are actually accumulating. Is this microvita coming through the magnetic field, which is why the spiral might affect because anything that can interact actively with the magnetic field would and focus and oriented properly would accumulate microvita. Interesting, because you know, there's a lot of people that I say a lot of people, but people that are involved in you know, that believe that there's an ascension or a shift that are going on. They believe that there's DNA upgrades that are happening with them. Yeah, that well, this the, is part of the microvita information. Can too. you explain a little bit more of that? that? He said at the time of the pole shift, uh, he said it's building up right now at the center of the Earth uh, a huge, let's say. Uh, explosion of new microvita, that at the time of the pole shift, this will be a huge release of microvita, which will then impact the surface, and in a very short time, there will be very rapid evolution of both the human body and new development of new, totally new species of living things. So a new human, so to speak, or but also they new said, species uh, of other uh, he things? He said uh, what's going to happen is 
we talked about a concept called rapid evolution. And just like we were talking about, the DNA is, is modeled by mycovita. And so, but mycovita in turn is directed by mind. So the human mind can direct mycovita to affect our own DNA. So, and what happens is during a time of crisis, when people are on a survival basis, uh, he said the strongest human tendency is survival. Um, and if we're on a survival basis, said when conditions on Earth are going to get really bad, people will be forced into survival mode. When they're in the survival mode, uh, they very intently focus on what changes in their body they need to survive. And he gave the example that in the last, in the last climate change during the time of Atlantis, the uh, woolly mammoth rapidly evolved into the modern elephant due to climate change, due to stress. And he said, because of this stress coming out, the human body is going to make some rapid changes mm. uh, to a new form. He talked about it. He said that in the future, humans on this planet will be shorter, stockier, their heads will get bigger. What I, said. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be shorter and stock here, but that's okay. <laughs> 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 Honestly, uh, <laughs> anyway, he said, uh, so this rapid evolution will be generated by the intense mental desire to survive, which will in turn direct microvita to make the DNA changes necessary. That's interesting, because I've always thought that consciousness impacts DNA. Yeah. This is a gut feel. Yeah, I think Darwin was only, I mean, uh, selection of the yeah. Yeah. survival of the fittest is a very small percentage of. I, I, well, I don't know, it could be the majority, but still there are more things going on. There's more things going on, and it changes from time to time based on. Agreed, so the yeah. amount of the different influences, right. like their impacts will vary with time. Yeah. So. Exactly, like during, during times of maybe relative calm, like we're in, it may be a survival of the fittest, but during times of intense survival, it might be more Stuff direct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The fundamental yeah. Well, I'd like to go back so, to, yeah. you know, to your question about about the orgone because yeah. I profoundly believe that we have underappreciated what Wilhelm Reich did largely intuitively, and I have often felt that he's answered a lot of the issues that have been before our civilization. Of course, one is what is the organic energy itself, but he understood uh, the most important thing, which is the spiral pattern, which he would draw in his books. Um, that is the nature of the what's called the helix wave. And now at the Prague Symposium, people are, for the first time, starting to talk about helicity in quantum waves that describe particles, and then the helicity would be easily understood as, as that orgone aspect that, that Reich talked about. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you think about it, isn't it entirely possible that in our meditation experiences, that we are sitting there with our mind telling us what's working for us and what's not, and isn't it likely that we're actually aligning all of the DNA structures in our body I mean, isn't it likely that the ecstatic feeling that you get in meditation is because we're better aligned mm -hmm. with our, between our mental ability, our mental activities and the entire DNA structure of our body? Then that this is then perceived as organization at the various structures of our body. Well, that's not surprising. If those structures are aligned, uh, with our mental activity, then that's mm -hmm. what it should feel like. Mm -hmm. So it seems that the ancient process of meditation is probably well-founded in what might be called orgonomy, mm -hmm. or is a kind of a corollary of mm -hmm. the hypothesis that uh, orgon energy exists and that it's a spiral character in the, um, whatever we would call the, the medium that... Um, mm -hmm quantum waves occupy. And so again, um, it seems that what we've learned from the quantum physics